Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. In this lesson, I want to talk about a technique employed by surveyors so that they don't have to make as many measurements. So, how do they do this? Well, let's say that there is an area that the surveyor has to map out. And let's say that in this area there are some objects, which I'm going to just put some random points on. So let's say that in this area could be a park or something like that. There are four points, Z, Y, X, W. And the engineer, oh, sorry, not engineer, the surveyor wants to create a map showing the distances between all of these points and draw a little map. So what did they do? Okay, so here is a technique called plane table survey. So what they do is they pick two points to be their survey line. So let's go point A, point B. Okay, so they establish um, two rods at point A and point B and they call this their survey line and they actually this is the only line they have to measure with the tape measure or whatever it is they have to find out the distance of this line okay so let's say that this distance is for example 20 meters okay so the next thing they do is they put this line A and B on a piece of paper okay they put this line on a piece of paper which I'm gonna draw now so they put this line on a piece of paper and they call it A dash and B dash okay so they draw this line exact same line on a piece of paper a dash b dash and then they draw it to a specific scale so let's say that this line is 20 meters but on paper it's 20 centimeters so they used a scale of 1 to 100 and they draw this line on a small piece of paper Okay, so what do they do next? Because this paper is going to end up being a map of this area. So how do they get this area onto a map? So the first thing they do is they put this piece of paper on a table. They put this piece of paper on a table, which is why this is called plain table surveying. And they put this piece of paper on a table uh, and they put the table at point A. So at point A there's going to be a little table now which I'll draw with a different color so they put a little table here and then they make sure that this point okay because this piece of paper is sitting on the table they're going to make sure that point A dash is sitting right on top of point A Okay, so then what do they do at this table? They use what we call a sight rule. A sight rule. A sight rule is basically a ruler. Okay, if you imagine a ruler, but on the end of the ruler is a little pin. Okay, a little pin on the end of the ruler. So what they can do is they can sit here and point the ruler at point Z okay at point Z they point the ruler at it and they're gonna look at where point Z is using these pins to help them establish line of sight they look at where point Z is and they draw a line along this point so what happens is um, on this piece of paper because they're using a ruler looking at point Z there will be a straight line on the piece of paper now okay there's gonna be a straight line on the piece of paper pointing towards point Z okay there's gonna be a straight line and then they're gonna repeat the same thing so using the sight rule they're gonna aim it at point Y 
aim at that point Y and draw a line. So there's going to be another straight line going towards point Y. And then they're going to aim at that point X and draw a straight line towards point X. So there's going to be a straight line towards point X. And then they aim the ruler at point W. So they're going to draw a straight line towards point W. Okay, so once they have done that, what they then do is they then move this whole table. They move this whole table across to point B. So the table is now sitting here. The table is now sitting here. And then they're going to make sure that point B, okay, this point right here, B dash, is going to be sitting right on top of point B. And then they're going to repeat the same thing. Okay, they're going to use the site rule. They're going to use the site rule. And then they're going to point it. Okay, they're going to point the site rule at each of these points. So they're going to point it at point Y. They're going to point the site rule to point Z. And then point the site rule at point W. Aim the site rule at point X. And then basically four new lines are going to be generated. Okay, four new lines are going to be generated because at, from point B, they're going to draw straight lines to these points. Okay, so now this piece of paper has all the information about point Z, Y, X, W because look at where these green lines intersect. Okay, the green lines intersect for point Z over here. So this point would be point Z. Um, this point would be point Y. This point would be point W. And this point would be point X. So on this single piece of paper, it's got all the information and measurements for how far point Z, Y, X, W is um, away from the survey line as well as away from each other because remember this diagram is drawn to scale this diagram is drawn to scale so using this I'll draw a larger version of it okay using this diagram which is drawn okay so that's a dash b dash we got z here we got y there we got X there, we got W here, we got the intersection, we got the lines from the survey line, lines from each end of the survey line. So this diagram here is now a map of this area. Okay, so using this map, we can then find things like distances, you know, because it's on a scale of one to a hundred. So whatever measurement is on here, this is 20 centimeters, right? So 20 centimeters times 100 would be um, 20 meters in real life. So a question could be, for example, on the map, AX measures A to X, so point A dash to point X is equal to let's say um, actually on the paper it's going to be z dash y dash x dash w dash because they're not the real points okay they're the points on your map so the real points is going to be z y x w on paper it's going to be z dash y dash okay so on the map a dash x dash is equals um, let's say 15 centimeters what is the field length so field length is going to be 15 now the scale factor is 1 to 100 so you just times it by 100 which is 1500 centimeters in real life convert that to meters so that's 15 meters in real life okay so now you can use this map to get all the measurements between each point you can find the area using Heron's formula or whatever formula you want to use you can find the angle between points all of that stuff okay so that's what's cool about plane table surveying 
intersection or triangulation method. Okay, I hope you guys learned something today. See you next time. Thank you.